I don't think it's any surprise that Forza Horizon 6 is on the horizon. Here's the thing. There haven't been any significant updates to Forza Horizon 5 for a little while now. The last significant update we got was all the way back in update 25, which was the Event Lab 2.0. And that's just kind of how it goes for Forza Horizon. It was the same for Forza Horizon 4, Horizon 3, and so on. As the game lives on and goes through its life cycle, less and less people are working on the current game as they shift focus and start working on the upcoming game. And I think that's going on right now with Forza Horizon 6. If you ask me personally, I think we'll be hearing about Forza Horizon 6 probably in the next three months or so. And that got me thinking. What could Forza Horizon 6 learn from Forza Horizon 5? There's a lot of great features in FH5. There's a lot of features in FH5. And Forza Horizon 6 can learn a lot from it. And with the help of you guys on the AR12 Discord server, we've compiled a list of seven things Forza Horizon 6 could learn from FH5. They're not in any particular order, but the last one probably is the most important. Let's jump into it. Number one, Event Lab is king. Before we get too far into this video, I just wanted to start things off by saying a quick thank you to each and every one of you who have checked out the AR-12 hoodies. Over the past couple of days, I've been packing up orders well into the night, driving to the post office multiple times throughout the day, just so you get your packages as soon as possible. It's been awesome, it's been super fun, so thank you. A couple of you guys have actually already received your orders and sent over some photos, which is always awesome to see. As always, if you'd like to check out these hoodies or the skill issue hoodies there's a link in the description down below as always thanks so much event lab is such a cool feature and it's probably the biggest thing that was ever added in forza horizon 5 and it completely dominates the game or well at least i think it does you and me we have no idea what the vast majority of people are doing while they play forza horizon 5 and unless you're a developer who has all of the analytics in front of you if so Hello, developer. I've got to assume, though, Event Lab is just massive, both in terms of people just playing Event Lab maps with their friends like we do during some of our challenges and just have fun with different sorts of races and event types, or both in the festival playlist where players get to experience some unique maps every single week. The Event Lab truly has something for everyone, and I think that's going to be the case in Forza Horizon 6. I wonder if the developers are actually using the Event Lab as a tool and taking a look at all of the analytics in there and going, well, these are the types of maps that people are playing the most. Maybe we should try to implement some of the styles of those maps into the map of the future game. For example, some of the most popular maps in Forza Horizon 5 are those big proper racing like arenas and stadiums. I wonder if in like the base game map, could we see a proper dedicated racetrack with proper racing curbs and stadium seating and all sorts of stuff like that. Another great example is the most popular map that I've ever made isn't my mazes or isn't any of the racetracks I've made. It's a simple quarter mile drag strip and I made it because people wanted to do quarter mile drag racing and my map has almost half a million plays. Maybe the developers are going to look at that and go, huh, clearly there's a lot of people who want to do quarter mile drag racing. Maybe we should include one in the game by default. Honestly, I have no idea if that's something the developers are doing. Taking a look at what's popular in the event lab in FH5 and implementing that stuff in the base game map. I have no idea, but I think it's a good jumping off point. Number two. And to be quite honest, this is probably the most controversial one I have in this entire video. Fear of missing out. FOMO. You hear this tossed around all the time when players are talking about how they hate FOMO in Forza Horizon 5. For example, in the festival playlist, a car is only available for one given week. And if you don't, well, you've either got to snipe the car on the auction house or just get lucky and have it return in a future playlist. And if you go onto Reddit or onto Twitter or even into the AR12 Discord server, you'll hear from a lot of people saying FOMO sucks. Which, yes, it kind of does. But... And it's a big but. I think from a developer perspective, FOMO actually works really, really well to get players engaged with the game every single week. Double but, I think there is a nice middle ground that the developers can reach, whether that be something like a backstage pass, adding cars into the auto show once they're no longer available, or something along those lines. So as a developer, you get that hit of FOMO and you have people coming back to the game every single week, but at the same time, you're not alienating casual players. For example, maybe in Forza Horizon 6, the developers might go, yes, FOMO works, 
but maybe we want to engage with some of our more casual players. So maybe three months after the car is no longer available or six months after the car is no longer available, maybe we just toss it into the auction house or the auto show. Number three, Forza Horizon is not a competitive game, but it kind of is. I know the developers have come out and said before, if you want a casual, fun little racing game to play, play Forza Horizon. If you want something competitive and to go try hard with, play Forza Motorsport. I don't know if I'm the only one, you'll need to tell me if you felt the same way, but especially at the end of Forza Horizon 4's life, I really got into the whole rank racing thing, both for racing and for drifting. One of my favorite things to do was try to go in and become like a grand master in drifting, which I found super, super fun. I really hope in combination with some of the event lab stuff that people are building with those amazing race courses and with all the amazing like formula drift stadiums and so on, the developers kind of take note of that and go, hmm, maybe people do want to be competitive in this game. I really hope they do because it's something missing from Forza Horizon 5 that I would love to see back in Forza Horizon 6. I'm gonna keep fingers crossed. Number four, and we're back to the controversial stuff. I wanted to talk about convertibles, indicators, and opening and closing car window. For the past what feels like 10 years or so, players have been asking the developers if we could get indicators, convertible roofs, and opening and closing your windows in a Forza Horizon game. However, I think Forza Horizon 5 told us that players don't actually want these things. You and I, again, we don't have the luxury of taking a look at all of the analytics behind the scenes for Forza Horizon 5, but the developers do, and they can see exactly how many players use the convertible roof feature, how many players use the race mode feature in Forza Horizon 5, and they can also see how often they use them. For example, when the Mercedes AMG made its debut in Forza Horizon 5, a load of people definitely mess around with the race mode thing, but are people still messing around with it today? And what about convertibles? When a new convertible comes to the game, players definitely mess around with the roof and try it out. But a month down the line, six months down the line, are the players still using the convertible roof feature? I'd be willing to place a bet that developers looked at analytics just like that in Forza Horizon 5 and then chose to or chose not to implement things like indicators or windows into Forza Horizon 6. For a feature that would require so much effort, so much time, and so much money, the developers need to be sure it's something that players are going to use. And I, and I bet you the developers looked at those numbers to see if it was worth it for them to do. We don't know the results of those analytics, but I guess we may or may not find out in the next game. This one is short and sweet. Cheaters are ruining leaderboards in Forza Horizon 5. I really hope FH6 learns from FH5 and implements some sort of anti-cheat or better tool for the developers to either clean up the leaderboards or prevent these sorts of things from happening in the future because it kind of just takes the fun out of leaderboards. Again, we're gonna need to cross fingers and hope for the best. Number six, the map. Let's be honest, the Eliminator kind of ruined the Forza Horizon 5 map. It meant if for the most part it was very flat, a ton of open fields, and a mountain bang on in the middle of the map. And that hasn't led to the best overall gameplay, unless you're playing the Eliminator. I really hope the biggest takeaway from the map for Forza Horizon 6 is that they don't repeat that same mistake, because yes, the Eliminator is a lot of fun, but what I would like a lot more than a great Eliminator is just a great map. Personally, I'm a big fan of the Rally Adventure map. It's got so many massive inclines and declines, super sharp corners, very small roads, and it's just a beautifully made map. And I really hope the developers take inspiration from Rally Adventure and implement it into FH6. Again, we're gonna keep fingers crossed for that one as well. And last but not least, number seven, the story mode and super cringe character. I just need to explain myself before I say what I'm about to say. Forza Horizon Playground Games, the people who make this game, they are a business. And to be a successful business, they need to sell as many copies of this game as possible, have as many people play this game as possible. And the best way for them to do that is make it E for everyone. A lot of people throughout the years have said, could we go back? I'm one of the people who've said this. Could we go back to what Forza Horizon 1 had, where it was a T for team game? If you play Forza Horizon 1 today, you will 100% go, how did that, how did they even get away with that back in the day? 
In comparison, Forza Horizon 5 is a super family-friendly game, a super safe game. And the reason they do that is because they want it to be E for everyone. I think there's a very fine line the developers could walk between having something that's E for everyone and something that's super mega cringe. It's a super difficult line to walk and finding that line is nearly impossible. But I really hope the developers at least try to make a bigger effort for Forza Horizon 6. Whether that be with tone or culture or just the feeling that the game gives off, I really hope they kind of turn it up just a little bit. So there you go. Those are my top seven things. What do you think Forza Horizon 6 could learn from Forza Horizon 5? Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.